I only made because we cared. Because we cared. Because we cared. Oh, yes, we cared. And he made a way for me. When my steps are weak. Weak and slow, and I don't know where to go. Because it is, oh, yes, it is. Oh, yes, it is. My steps are weak and slow, and I don't know where to go. Praise the Lord. Or I saw up and pray together. Heavenly Father, we thank you for the Bible study tonight. Thank you for the timing. Thank you for the way you brought us together. And thank you for the last final Bible study of this wonderful year. Thank you for everything we've learned as we have been going through the sermon on the mount. And thank you for the impact and impute you have in every one of our lives. Thank you, Lord, because every time we come, you open our eyes of understanding. And we always see what we have never seen. We are praying, O oh Lord, tonight, once again, break the bread of life to every one of us in Jesus' name. Help us, Lord, to keep awake and then to learn everything you want us to learn. And we pray that the study of the world tonight will be of tremendous benefit to every participant in this retreat in Jesus' name. 
and especially the ministers and the leaders in the kingdom. The Lord, we pray you make us to see what we need to see as leaders in the vineyard of the Lord in Jesus' name. And in all our workers to you, you help us as we're growing up to see and to know what you have reserved for us in the study tonight in Jesus' name. All our members, all our invitees, all the people who attend the retreat, and then we at the Bible study together. Oh Lord, we pray you give us real spirit of understanding. Thank you, Lord, because we know you have answered. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Thank you very much. We can sit down. As we come to our Bible study tonight, we come to Matthew chapter 7. We have been looking at Matthew chapter 5, Matthew chapter 6, and now we are in Matthew chapter 7. And as we have come Monday, Monday after Monday, all through this year, I may come in before you, we have seen the might of the Lord as he lays down the unchanging principles of kingdom life. This is the king. And the king is talking about the kingdom. And he's talking about the principles of living within the kingdom. And he's not giving us wisdom in that principle. How we live. What we do. How we also give out what he has taught us. And now we get other people involved in the wisdom and the word of the kingdom. Matthew chapter 7 verse 6. Give not that which is holy unto the dogs. Neither cast ye your pills before swine. Lest they trample them under their feet. And turn again and rend you. Those words I have read to you. They appear very difficult for many Christians to understand. Not only to understand, it even becomes more difficult to apply for many, many people. And yet, these are words of wisdom. That the Lord Jesus Christ gave to all his disciples. And he gave these principles to the kingdom citizens. And he says, give not. When you read your Bible, you are going to find many places. It says, give and it shall be given unto you. And then we learn from the Acts of the Apostles that Jesus said, It is more blessed to give than to receive. But in this place, it says, Give not. And then he tells us what we are not to give. Give not that which is holy unto the dogs. Neither cast ye your pills before the swine. Lest they trample them under their feet and turn again and rend you. We need to find out those words that which is holy, and then the pills, and then the dogs, and then the swine. Are we to take them literally? No. Not everybody in the kingdom has dog. In fact, the children of Israel were not supposed to even keep swine. That is pig. And so, it's not everybody that has dogs or has swine, pigs. And as we look at our congregation here, it's not everybody that has a dog at home or has a pig. Or is racing pigree. And therefore we must know the words dog and swine are symbolic. Not only that, the words that which is holy and the pills, those are symbolic. Obviously, that which is holy is something sacred, something holy. 
something devoted unto the Lord. And then the pearls, that is something precious, peculiar. It's a treasure, a peculiar treasure, a precious treasure. There are sacred, precious, peculiar treasures that will not be recognized by the dog. The dog doesn't know what a holy thing is. Don't give it to him. The swine cannot recognize what a pearl is. Don't give it to him. That's what the Lord is saying. They don't recognize it. They don't know its value. They don't know its worth. They don't know its usefulness. And if a person doesn't know the value, the worth, the usefulness of a thing, if you give it to that person, it's going to be a waste. And therefore, all they will do is that the dogs and the pigs will trample under their feet what they do not recognize, what they do not appreciate, and what they do not need. Throwing such treasures to them will also arouse their wild nature. They will turn again and wrench you. That's what Jesus said. Look at those words again. Give not that which is holy unto the dogs. Neither cast ye your pearls before swine. What if you do? They will trample them under their feet. You'll even lose those things you give. Because they're trampled under feet. Not only that, they will harm you. They will hurt you. They will tear you. They will injure you. And then they will turn again and rend you. But let's ask a question before we go on. Apart from that which is holy, apart from a sacred sin, which dogs do not recognize, which dogs do not appreciate or need, are there things we can give to dogs? Great question. Great question. The Lord says, don't give that which is holy unto the dog. But are there things we can give to the dog? Exodus chapter 22. I'm reading from verse 31, Exodus 22, reading from verse 31. And ye shall be holy men unto me, neither shall ye eat any flesh that is torn of beasts in the field. Ye shall cast it to the dogs. What is torn in the field, that's not sacred, that's common. What is torn in the field, you are holy men, you are holy women, don't touch that. It's a kind of defiled. It was torn in the field. Give that to the dogs and the dogs can feed on that. Mark chapter 7. We're reading verse 27. Mark chapter 7 verse 27. But Jesus said unto her, Let the children first be filled. For it is not meat, it is not try to take the children's bread and cast it to the dogs. Verse 28, and she answered and said yeah, unto him, Yes, Lord, yet the dogs under the table eat of the children's crumbs. Those crumbs, they're no more sacred. They're no more special. The children have eaten already of the loaf and then the sin, the crumbs are fell to the ground. They are dirty. They are not hygienic, but they are good food for the dogs. You can give that to the dogs. What the Lord is saying is, it's not to say we neglect the dogs and not give them anything, but don't give that which is holy. We're looking at Judges chapter 7 verse 5. Judges chapter 7. And we're looking at verse 5. It says, So he brought down the people unto the water. And the Lord said unto Gideon, Everyone that lappeth of the water with his tongue, as a dog lappeth, him shall thou set by himself. Likewise, everyone that bows down, Upon his knees to drink. Now he's talking about the dogs there. The dogs, they need water to quench and cool their thirst. You can give them water. That one is a common thing for every creature. 
You can give them bread that's common. You can give them the meat that is torn in the field that's common, that's not sacred. You can give them water to drink that's common, that's general, that's not sacred. That's not the holy thing. And so then we understand. When, wherever the dogs are, wherever the swine and the pigs are, we're not neglecting them. We're only giving them what they need, what they recognize, what they appreciate. But that which is holy, that which is special, that which is sacred, don't give that to the dogs. They won't recognize it. They won't appreciate it. And they don't need it. And your peers, precious treasure, costly pre treasure, don't give that to the swine. The swine will not, they don't need it. They don't recognize it. And therefore all they will do is to hurt you. Look at Proverbs chapter 11. Proverbs chapter 11. We're looking at verse 22. Proverbs 11 verse 22. As a jewel of gold in a swine's snout, so is a fair woman which is without discretion. What the Bible there is saying, what is saying there is that a jewel of gold upon the swine will be ridiculous. It will be unsightly. It will be ugly. It will not be appropriate. Therefore, you don't give that to them. We're learning something. You can give what is necessary. Don't give what is unnecessary. You can give what is needed. Don't give what they don't need. You can give what they recognize. Don't give what they don't recognize. Give not that which is holy unto the dogs. Neither cast ye your peers before swine. Lest they trample them under their feet. And turn again and rend you. How do we spiritualize that Jesus is the bread of life? Everybody needs the bread of life. That is not something special. We're to preach the gospel to every creature. Don't say that one looks like a dog. That one looks like swine. I cannot give them the bread of life. They need that bread of life. Give everybody the opportunity of hearing the gospel. Jesus is the water of life. And everybody needs the water, the bread and the water. That's for everybody, for the pigs and for the swine and for the dogs. And then you give that to everyone. That's why Jesus said in John chapter 4, John chapter 4, I'm reading from verse 14. John chapter 4, reading from verse 14. And whosoever drinketh of the water that I shall give him shall never thirst, but the water that I shall give him there shall be in him a well of water springing up into everlasting life. Everybody needs that. Look at verse 10. Jesus answered and said unto her, If thou knewest the gift of God and who it is that says unto thee, Give me to drink, thou wouldest have asked of him and would have given thee the living water. Revelation chapter 22. Revelation chapter 22, verse 17. Revelation 22, verse 17. And the spirit and the bride say, come. And let him that heareth say, come. And let him that is a thirst come. And whosoever will, let him take the water of life freely. Whosoever, whosoever. You, you don't uh, push out anybody uh, to say no. We're not to give you the water of life or the bread of life. Let them all come and then you receive the water of life. But the holy thing, the secret thing, the deep mysteries of the kingdom. Those ones are kept only for the children of the king. We're coming back to Matthew chapter 7. Matthew chapter 7, we're looking at verse 6. Matthew chapter 7 verse 6, Give not that which is holy unto the dogs, neither cast ye your peers before swine, lest they trample them under, under their feet and turn again and rend you for proper understanding. We're going to divide the message to three parts. Number one, description of men as dogs and swine. 
the description of men as dogs and swine and then we come to point number two number two is uh, discernment in ministry towards dangerous sinners there's some sinners like dogs like swine discernment in ministry towards dangerous sinners and then number three declaration of the master to his disciples and servants number one the description of men as dogs and swine as jesus said give not that which is holy unto the dogs neither cast ye your peers before swine it is very important and significant to identify who the dogs and the swine represent but before we do this we must remind ourselves once again that jesus said preach the gospel to every creature don't deny anyone the opportunity and the privilege of hearing that jesus christ is savior preach that gospel to every creature if you quote chapter 7 verse 6 of matthew and you say i cannot give the gospel to that i cannot preach to that that will be a misunderstanding of the world preach the gospel to every creature we're told in hebrews chapter 2 verse 9 jesus tasted death for every man he died for everyone and he made salvation available for everyone christ died for the ungodly romans chapter 5 the lord is not willing that any should perish but that all should come to repentance second peter chapter 3 verse 9 i'm dead of both to the greeks and to the barbarians the gospel of christ is the power of god unto salvation to everyone that believeth romans chapter 1 and if an enemy hunger even though it's dog in character dog in nature dog in action if your enemy hunger feed him if he thirst give him drink we must not withhold the food and the water from anyone neither should we deny anyone the privilege of hearing the gospel christ the bread of life christ the water of life is for everyone special secret deep mysteries of the kingdom that's the holy thing that which is holy that's sacred that's special those are deep mysteries of the kingdom the great doctrines of god's word are not for strangers outside the kingdom but all must hear the gospel of salvation now if you look at this one again matthew chapter 7 verse 6 give not that which is holy unto the dogs i want you to remember now the people that were in front of jesus christ while he was talking to them they were israelites and they knew the priesthood and they knew the levites and if you were to ask a levite what is that which is holy Oh, he will say that is simple. What you find in the sanctuary, what you find in the holy place, because you know the tabernacle of the children of Israel was divided into three parts the outside court, and then the holy place, and then the holy of holies. And then in the holy place, there the showbread. Only the priest could eat that. You couldn't give that bread, the holy thing. You couldn't give it to an outsider. They didn't even have the privilege. And so when an Israelite had this, give none that which is holy unto the dogs, they understood. They counted the Gentiles as dogs. They counted the Gentiles as unclean. They counted the Gentiles as pigs, as swine eating bad things thinking bad thoughts living a bad life those are the dogs and those are the swine and when an israelite heard give not that which is holy unto the dogs that's all right we're not to give such a thing to the dogs can you imagine an israelite looking at a gentle and befriending that gentle and giving something the show 
bread from the uh, table of, of that bread and giving it to a gentle no the dogs and the swine the unclean animals the dog was a scavenger of the village picking things up and was generally fierce and dangerous the swine was also regarded as dirty unclean in every way so the dogs signify men who are still in their sins men who delight in their foolishness and wickedness and unashamedly they practice what decent people will detest will hate will run away from proverbs chapter 26 proverbs chapter 26 verse 11 Proverbs 26, verse 11. As a dog returneth to his vomit, so a fool returneth to his folly. Somebody that has the depravity, the foolishness of depravity, the foolishness of sinning, the foolishness of wickedness, and the foolishness of the Adamic nature that is still there, does not appreciate anything righteous, anything holy. Those are the dogs. And then the swine also denote men of iniquity and impurity. The swine, eh, those are the people they don't have any mind, any sense for dignity. And their understanding is so darkened that they will glorify, they will glory in their shame and wallow in the mire. Dogs and swine, these men of corrupt mind, deadened in their consciences. They have no appreciation for holy things, the peers of the kingdom. They trample them on the feet. Their nature is vile and violent. Like wild dogs and vile um, swine, they would rather rend and tear or persecute ministers of the ministry of, of the mystery of Christ and the proclaimers of the unsearchable riches of the King of Christ. Look at Philippians chapter 3. The dogs, uh, the Bible identifies them very clearly. Philippians chapter 3. Verse 2, beware of dogs, beware of evil workers, beware of the concession. He puts all of them together, evil workers, the workers of evil. The people who are violent in their nature. And they are violent in their reaction and response to everything that happens in society. Beware of those dogs, beware of those evil men in Second Kings chapter 8. Second Kings chapter 8, I'm reading from verse 11. Second Kings chapter 8, reading from verse 11. And he settled his countenance steadfastly until he was ashamed. And the man of God wept. This man came. He came to Elisha. His name is Azael. And he came to Elisha to ask a question. He came to the prophet of God looking for revelation. And then the man of God kept looking at him, gazing at him steadfastly and did not remove his eyes. And then the man of God began to cry. He will not even talk. And then Azael in verse 12 said, Why weepest my Lord? Man of God, why are you looking at me and crying? And then it says, and he answered, Because I know the evil that thou wilt do unto the children of Israel. Their strongholds will thou set on fire, and their young men will thou slay with the sword, and wilt dash their children and reap up their women with child. And Azael said, But what is thy servant a dog that he should do this great thing? You talk about me like that, that that is what I will do in the future. It's only men who are dogs who do things like that. Who destroy, who kill, who murder innocent people. The man of God said, that's what you are going to do. That's why I was crying. And the, and the man replied, if I do that, then I'm just a dog. Now you understand when Jesus said, give not that which is holy. Unto the dogs. I was talking of violent people, vile people, wicked people, cruel people, unkind people. That when you are trying to help them, their nature is evil. Those are the dogs in Psalm 22. 
Psalm 22, we're looking at verse 16. As students of the Bible, you must remember that Psalm 22 is Messianic Psalm. That is, it is a psalm talking about Christ the Messiah. Psalm 22 verse 16, for dogs have compassed me. The assembly of wicked men have enclosed me. They pierce my hands and my feet. Those people that crucified Christ, when Pilate said, I see nothing wrong in this man. I find no fault in him. They said, crucify him. Crucify him. Those are the dogs. The people that had no sympathy, no compassion, no mercy, no appreciation, no consideration of the value and the walls of anybody's life. And even though Pilate said, there is no fault in him, they still said, get rid of him all the same. Those are the dogs. For dogs have compassed me. The assembly of wicked, of the wicked, have enclosed me. They pierce my hands and my feet, I may tell all my bones. They look and stare upon me. They part my garments among them, and they cast lots upon my vesture. And then we look at Psalm 59. Psalm 59, I'm reading from verse 2. We're looking at the description of the dogs and the swine. And the reason why Jesus said, give not that which is holy, that which is sacred, that which is precious, the deep mysteries of the kingdom. Don't give it to them. Give them the water of life. Let them get saved after they have gotten saved. Their nature will change. They will not be dogs again. And then you can give them that which is holy after that. And you can give them the pills after that. Psalm 59, I'm reading from verse 2. 59 verse 2. Deliver me from the workers of iniquity. And save me from bloody men. For lo, they lie in wait for my soul. The mighty have gathered against me, not for my transgression, not for my sin, O Lord. They run and prepare themselves without my fault. I wait to help me, and behold, thou therefore, o Lord God of hosts, the God of Israel, I wait to visit all the heathen. Be not merciful to any wicked transgressors. They return at the evening. They make a noise like a dog. They make a noise like a dog. They go around about the city. Behold, they belch out with their mouths. Swords are in their leaves. For who say they does hear? Those are the people. Those are the people, very cruel, very wicked, and they, you cannot appease them. If you try to help them and give them what they don't appreciate, all they will do is to trample under everything. Eventually, they will turn around and rend you. We're looking at Second Peter chapter 2, the dogs and the swine. Second Peter chapter 2, reading from verse 20. For if after they have escaped from the pollution, they have escaped the pollutions of the world through the knowledge of the Lord and the Savior Jesus Christ, they are again entangled therein and overcome. The latter end is worse with them than the beginning, for it had been better for them not to have known the way of righteousness than after they have known it. To turn from the holy commandment delivered unto them. Listen to the next verse 22. But it is happened unto them. According to the true proverb, the dog is turned to his own vomit again. And the sow, the swine, the pig that was washed to a wallowing in the mire. Those are the people. They backslide to the point they don't have any interest in righteousness or holiness or in the word of God anymore, counseling them will be a waste of time. And telling them the deep things of the kingdom will be a waste of time. Cast not that which is holy, give not that which is holy unto the dogs. Neither cast ye your peers before swine, lest they trample them under their feet. And then they'll turn around again and they will rend you. And if they don't repent, what happens to them eventually? In Revelation chapter 22, I'm reading from verse 15. Revelation chapter 22, verse 15. 
for without are the dogs and the sorcerers and the mongers and the and the murderers and the idolaters and whosoever loveth and maketh a lie now you will see there what the lord was talking about that those the dogs they were the people that didn't have any delight at all in good things and wonderful things and the things of the kingdom and uh, just give them the basic gospel that's why when we go to preach and we're having a crusade we don't touch doctrine we don't touch doctrine at all because that is a holy thing and you are you are preaching to many many people they don't have any understanding of the gospel and therefore you keep just keep to the bread of life and the water of life just repentance and faith in christ and healing and deliverance and then you give them an invitation that one they can understand but when you begin to go into the rapture and the second coming and you go into the great tribulation then you go into you know administration in the church you go into how we can serve god acceptably and you go into the mysteries of the kingdom that they cannot understand give not that which is holy unto the dogs neither cast in your peers before swine lest they trample them on the feet and then they turn again and rend you we're coming to point number two now discernment in ministry towards dangerous sinners dogs and swine dangerous sinners discernment in ministry and let's read again matthew chapter 7 verse 6 give not this is emphatic don't be too excited i know a lot i want to give it to them wait know who you are talking to know who you are addressing know who is before you and evaluate him identify him locate him where he is spiritually and if this is another dog this is another swine you can give them the crumbs that fall from the master's table you can give them the meat that is the bread of life you can give them the water of life that's enough and once you've given that that's what you give you must size up the people you must evaluate the people and then you're able to tell them what you need to tell them give not that which is holy unto the dogs neither cast in your peers before swine lest they trample them under their feet and turn again and rend you the lord is making us to understand and is giving us instruction that we must be wise we must be discerning in ministering to different kinds of people we are not to offer the great doctrines of god's word to those who are violent to unconverted men who would curse and blaspheme and not we should not give peculiar things to debase people profligate people who would not perceive their value no son of aaron would think of giving the holy things of the sanctuary or the showbread from the holy place to an unclean common person no servant of christ our great our great high priest should give the holy sin of the peculiar treasures of the kingdom to dogs and swine and to unclean unconverted people well, for example let me say this we, we have a special meeting and i just told you before i started the message that we're going to have leadership strategy congress uh, next monday we're starting next monday and we get all the echelon the top echelon of our leadership in the church we get them together and we begin to reveal some deep deep things to them and there are some people they will buy those cases and they'll buy all the tapes and then they'll just give distribute to anybody they want to give to whether those people are saved or not and they just say we just came we went to a particular congress and this is a great conference in our church and i think that uh, you know i just want you to hear what we heard over there is a fellow born again if he's born again has he gone through some steps to be able to come to this level that you want to give him what you're giving him give not that which is holy unto the dogs neither cast ye your peers before swine 
And then we need to understand, and you know, there are some people that come to help us at the Congress. And like, you know, those who come to help us with sanitation, and they come to help us with singing in the choir. They come to help us in different places, areas of work. And here is Congress, and if people come to help like that, some of the things we're saying will, will get into their ears. They will hear. Are they qualified to hear that? Will they appreciate what they are hearing? Will they understand what they are hearing? Or will they just destroy the church because they are hearing what they shouldn't hear? This year's Congress have invited a choir and members from some of our states. The way we've done it because we're going to have a special Congress, we've invited, we've looked at all the zones, that is the southwest and the southeast and the south south and the northeast and the northwest and the middle belt in Nigeria. We picked up one stage out of each of those zones and then we're bringing those people, but we limit the number of the members of choir they're going to bring. We just want to encourage them because this is a special year when we're having people from all over and then i hope our state overseers will not just give opportunity to people you know we're going to lagos our choir is going you go who are they because they will hear everything we're saying and you don't want to give that which is holy unto dogs neither do you want to cast your pills before swine and that's the reason why we make selection. That's the reason why we say, please, at this, it will not help you. You cannot go at this time. You will not understand. You will, you will just trample on that. You will not know the value of the Congress. You will not know the value of what has been given out. Therefore, please stay at home. We'll give you what, you are, what we can give you. The retreat, general retreat. We'll preach what everybody needs to hear. And then the Congress is very special. Give not that which is holy unto the dogs. Neither cast ye your peers before swine. They'll trample them on the feet. They don't need it. And so we make selection. And we say now, this is the right person to be in such and such a place. Is that anything strange? No. Did you see Jesus Christ? He went to the Mount of Transfiguration. And then he picked up James, John, and Peter. And those people, they saw Moses and they saw Elijah. And they saw a glorious fellowship as they were coming down. Jesus said, wait, can I talk to you? Everything you saw there on the mount, close your mouth, padlock your mouth, that glory, that which is holy, that wonderful peel, and you saw Moses talking to me, and you saw Elijah talking to me, don't open your mouth and say it before the rest. There is one person there. His name is Judas Iscariot. Don't let him hear about my coming glory. He will not appreciate it. He will trample it on the feet. He'll turn around and he will surrender me for crucifixion. Don't open your mouth and tell him. Give not that which is holy unto dogs. Neither cast ye your peers before swine, lest they trample them on the feet. And then they turn around and rend you. Let's see what happened in Israel. Exodus chapter 29. Exodus chapter 29. Verses 32 and 33. And Aaron and his sons shall eat the flesh of the ram. And the bread that is in the basket by the door of the tabernacle of the congregation. And they shall eat those things wherewith the atonement was made to consecrate and to sanctify them. But a stranger shall not eat thereof because they are holy. That's the principle. This is sacred. This is holy. A stranger to the children of Israel, a stranger was just like a dog 
unclean. They have not been cleansed from their sin. Give not that which is holy unto the dogs. Neither cast ye your peers before swine. They don't have any recognition for it. They don't have any value placed on it. And so Jesus said, don't give them. Leviticus chapter 22. I'm reading from verse 10. Leviticus chapter 22 verse 10. And so you cannot come to the Congress and buy all those materials and just indiscriminately distribute them. And we cannot market them just anyhow. We cannot put all those materials on the shelf and say it's now for in the public domain. Let anyone that wants to have those things of the Congress, let them get. No, because give not that which is holy unto the dogs. That's why my, you know, partners in ministry, group coordinators and coordinators, when we say give us people who are going to help us, and they're going to help us with ushering and security and this and that, group coordinators and coordinators, let's, let's work together. Don't leave everything in the hands of, you know, our brethren. They're doing well, but all the same, all the same, all the same. Find out the people that are coming from your districts or your groups. And then find out. Don't leave the choice of members of the choir into the hands of those leaders in the choir alone. You are the group coordinator. You are the pastors there. You are the leaders, the ministers there. Find out who are the members of the choir they are bringing from your old district. Find out that's your responsibility. Let's work together so that we don't just bring anybody to the Congress. People that will not have any value, any appreciation for the things we're learning. We need to find out that's what Jesus said. Give not that which is holy unto the dogs. Neither can see your pills before swine. Lest they'll just trample them on the feet. And then the people that come to the Congress and then they want to benefit, everything is just trampled on their feet. And you know, those few people that you bring in, they just destroy the whole spirituality in the, in the Congress and we cannot move forward. Then they turn around and rend us and criticize us. If the food does not get to them, they're not even regular participants there, but if the food does not get to them, their complaints will almost bring the roof down. Give not that which is holy unto the dogs, neither cast ye your peers before swine. They will trample them on their feet, then they will turn around and they will rend you. In Leviticus chapter 22 verse 10, Leviticus 22 verse 10, There shall no stranger eat of the holy thing. You see that? And that's what Jesus said, the holy thing. The sacred sin, there shall no stranger eat of the holy sin, a sojourner of the priest, or an hired servant shall not eat of the holy sin. Verse 12, if the priest's daughter also be married to a stranger, she shall not eat of an offering of the holy things. The daughter of a priest obviously normally should you know partake of what the father is partaking of but if that daughter marries a stranger that daughter disqualifies herself from partaking of the holy sin the great special privilege Matthew chapter 2 in Matthew chapter 2 we're looking at it from verse 7 Matthew chapter 2 Reading from verse 7. In Matthew chapter 2 verse 7. Then Herod when he had privily called the wise men. Inquired of them diligently what time the star appeared. And he sent them to Bethlehem. And said go show go and search diligently. For the young child, and when ye are found, bring me word again, that I may come and worship him also. When they had had the king, they departed, and lo, the star which they saw in the east went before them, till it came and stood over where the young child was. 
when they saw the star, they rejoiced ex with exceeding great joy. And then it says in that next verse, when they heard, it says in verse, and they rejoiced with exceeding great joy. I back up now to verse 8. Matthew chapter 2. Now we're looking at verse 11. And when they were come into the house, they saw the young child with Mary, his mother, and fell down, worshipped him. And when they had opened their treasures, they presented unto him gifts, gold, frankincense, and myrrh. And being warned of God in a dream that they should not return unto Herod. They should not return unto Herod. Herod said, I'm interested. I want to know about this newborn king. But in his heart, a dog, a swine, a pig. And he had a very bad intention. He wanted to kill Jesus. Don't give him the information. Don't go back and tell him we have discovered where the newborn king is. And then all he will do is just to go straight there and get rid of him before he grows up. And so being warned of God in a dream that they should not return to Herod. They departed on, onto their own country by another way. And then it says, And when they departed, behold, the angel of the Lord appeared to Joseph in a dream, saying, Arise, take the young child and his mother, and flee into Egypt, and be thou, be thou there until I bring thee word, for Herod will seek the young child to destroy him. We who are leaders in the church should be vigilant. You cannot just throw around the holy thing, the holy thing, the doctrines, the mysteries, the great, great sacred things of the kingdom. You cannot just throw it around to everybody. You know, in leadership, you must be able to bear the heat and bear the opposition and bear the anger. Of the people that feel that you are not giving them some things or to give them. Because you know, if you give them, you are not going to serve any good purpose. It's just like you are giving the sacred holy thing unto the dogs. See the transformation and see the change. And see the manifestation of the grace of God. A new life that we know that's not a dog, that's not a swine. Then you can give, you'll be at liberty to give the holy sin, the sacred sin, the peers, the precious things of the kingdom unto them. Know them before you give out the sacred important things of the kingdom. We're looking at Jude, verse 22 and verse 23. Jude, verse 22, verse 23. From 22, and of some have compassion, making a difference, and others save with fear, pulling them out of the fire, hitching even the garments spotted by the flesh. The Lord then has instructed us to be wise and to be discerning in ministering to different kinds of people. And he wants us to be able to distinguish and differentiate and discern between the people that ought to have something and those who do not need to have. In fact, even within the body, those who are not dogs, those who are just babes in Christ, those who are very, very young. And let's look at what the Bible says in 1 Corinthians chapter 3. 1 Corinthians chapter 3. And I'm reading there from verse 1. 1 Corinthians chapter 3, verse 1. And I, brethren, could not speak unto you as unto spiritual, but as unto carnal, even as unto babes in Christ. I have fed you with meal, cannot with meat. For hitherto ye were not able to bear it, neither yet now are ye able. 
you know, a minister should distinguish between those who are growing up and those who are kind of retrogressing, those who are going back, and those who do not have the knowledge they ought to have. You need to know what peop where people are, what people know, what people already have, before you know what you are going to give them next. And so Paul, the apostle, said, I couldn't tell you everything I should have told you because you are just babes. And then we're told in Hebrews chapter 5. Hebrews chapter 5, we're looking at verse 13. Hebrews chapter 5, verse 13. Why don't we read from verse, uh, verse 12. For when for the time ye ought to be teachers, ye have need that one teach you again, which be the first principles of the oracles of God, and are become such as have need of milk, and not of strong meat. For everyone that uses milk is unskillful in the word of righteousness, for he is a babe, but strong meat belongeth to them that are full age. Even those who by reason of use have their senses exercised to discern both good and evil. And so we understand then the kind of privilege we give out. It must be to the people that know the value. They appreciate the value. They recognize the value. They say this is a holy thing. I must handle it carefully. This is a peel of the kingdom. The mysteries of the kingdom. A great privilege. I must handle it with care. We come to point number three. The declaration of the master to his disciples and servants the declaration of the master to his disciples and servants matthew chapter 7 i'm reading from verse 6 again matthew chapter 7 reading from verse 6 give not that which is holy unto the dogs neither cast ye your peers before swine lest they trample them under their feet and turn again and rend you. Give not that which is holy. Give not that which is holy unto the dogs. Neither cast ye your peers before swine. Lest they trample them on the feet. And it turned around and rent you. When the Bible says that which is holy, can we identify from scripture that which is holy? Number one, the deep truths of God's law. Number one, the deep truths of God's law. We're looking at Hosea chapter 8 verse 12. I have written unto him the great things of my law. But they were counted as a strange thing. No value. They don't put any value. The great things of my law. Look at Romans. Join that with Romans chapter 7 verse 12. Romans chapter 7. We're looking at verse 12. Wherefore the law is holy. And the commandment also holy, just, and good. And that holy sin that deep truths of the law of God. You give it to some people, they count it as a strange thing. Don't give it to them. Number two, sacred privilege of priesthood. Reserved only for those who are called, those who are cleansed, those who are consecrated. That's the holy thing the Lord was talking about. There are people you cannot just bring into the priesthood. And leaders, I appreciate your vigilance. Uh, leaders at the headquarters church and leaders also in the state and the region and the various countries you know some people have been undisciplined and in their discipline it's because of immorality and their immorality was a shameful thing like the dogs that you see outside they don't have any sense of shame and they committed that marriage just a few weeks ago, a few months ago. And now we're going for the Congress. And they rush to you, Pastor, have mercy on me. I don't want to miss this Congress. It is a once in a year. Leech the discipline. Release me. Let me go to this Congress. 
and yet they do not fit in because they are dogs and swine and what he studied this is that the lord is telling every leader you don't just hurriedly remove only hurriedly lift up the discipline because somebody wants to be at the congress as a change taking place in their lives or are they just going to put the pressure on us and bulldoze us into taking decision are they not to show that they have the maturity and they have the calling, they have the cleansing, the commission, the consecration to be at the Congress? Give not that which is holy unto the dogs, neither cast ye your peers before swine, lest they trample them under feet and then they turn around and rend you. It's of no use just bringing people if they have not been cleansed and committed and consecrated and they're not called leave them back at home and when we get back home you're not going to just gather every dick and hurry and say okay you are not able to go to the congress everybody now come and listen no sacred sin that which is holy don't cast on the dogs. We're looking at Nehemiah. Nehemiah chapter chapter 7. Nehemiah chapter 7. Read it from verse 64. These sought their register among those that were reckoned by genealogy. But it was not found. Therefore were they as polluted put from the priesthood. The priesthood is a sacred thing. The priesthood is that which is holy. And you cannot give that to just everybody. Because they were polluted and not cleansed. That's why they were sent away. And there's another thing. Do you know that your child, if you are born again. And if you're children of God, your children, they have that influence, spiritual influence, biblical influence, the influence of your fellowship with Christ, they have that influence upon them. And look at, uh, look at 1 Corinthians chapter 7. 1 Corinthians chapter 7. I'm reading there in verse 14. 1 Corinthians chapter 7 verse 14. For the unbelieving husband is sanctified by the wife. And the unbelieving wife is sanctified by the husband. Else were your children unclean, but now they are holy. Your child that you are brought up in the way of the Lord. And then after bringing up that child, that child now wants to get married. And then there is a dog, an unclean person. There is a pig, a swine, an unclean person, unconverted person. And he says, I met your daughter in school. I met your daughter in the place of work. I met your daughter somewhere. I want to marry your daughter. And then you can, you, can, you can sense the odor of the alcohol and the cigarette from the mouth. And you say, do you know Christ? Are you born again? Or it says, I didn't come to talk about religion. I just want you to give me your daughter. You do not give the holy thing to the dog and to the swine. We're looking at Deuteronomy chapter 7 verse 1 to verse 3. Deuteronomy chapter 7 verse 1 to verse 3 when the lord thy god shall bring thee into the land whither thou goest to possess it and has cast out many nations before thee the hittites and the gagashites and the amorites and the canaanites and the Perizzites and the hybrids and the jebus are seven nations greater and mightier than thou then it says when the lord thy god shall deliver them before thee Thou shalt smite them and utterly destroy them. Those are the dogs and the pigs and the swine. Thou shalt make no covenant with them. Now show them mercy. Show mercy unto them. Neither shalt thou make marriages with them. Thy daughter thou shalt not give unto his son. Nor his daughter shalt thou take unto thy son. Give not that which is holy. Your daughter, you have raised up in the way of the Lord. That's a precious child. 
and whatever their tears, whatever their, whatever their pressure, you know, these uh, little girls, 25, 26, 27, little, little girls, they don't understand. They live on emotion. They live on what they see today. And you are the one to help them at such a time when they're emotionally involved with that man or your son, emotionally involved with that lady. And then you say, my boy, you cannot think straight. Your emotion is standing in your way. My daughter, my girl, you cannot think. Your emotion is standing in your way. I will think for you because I'm independent and detached from the situation. I've raised you up. You are born again. I've raised you up and I've shown you the deep things of the kingdom. There's no way you're going to marry this dog and this swine. Be plain and give not that which is holy unto the dogs. Neither cast ye your peers before swine. Do you know the Holy Ghost is that which is holy? The Holy Ghost, that which is holy. We're coming to Acts of the Apostles chapter 8. Acts chapter 8. And I'm reading there from verse 18. And when Simon saw that through laying on of the apostles' hands, the Holy Ghost was given, he offered them money, saying, Give me also this power, that on whomsoever I lay hands, he may receive the Holy Ghost. And Peter said unto him, Thy money perish with thee. That's a dog. A Samaritan dog. No cleansing in the heart, no consecration, no appreciation of who the Holy Ghost is. He wants to buy the third person in the Trinity. He wants to buy the gift of the Holy Ghost. Here is money. Already he reveals who he is. And Peter remembered, give not that which is holy. This is a sacred experience. You know, all these prayer warriors that go around and they don't care whether people are saved or not, whether people are purified and made holy and sanctified or not. And they say, I have the gift. I have the gift. If I pray for anybody, they will receive the Holy Ghost. Give not that which is holy unto the dogs, neither cast in your peers before swine. They will trample them on the feet. They'll be going about, let me show you I can speak in tongues. Let me show you I got the gift of the Holy Ghost. Let me show you this and that. And then they make a jest of a sacred experience. But Peter said, your money perish with you. And then it says, because thou hast thought that the gift of God may be purchased with money, thou hast neither part nor lodge in this matter, for thy heart is not right in the sight of God. Repent therefore of this thy wickedness, and pray God, if perhaps the thought of thine heart may be forgiven thee, for I perceive that thou art in the God of bitterness and in the bond of iniquity. Give not that which is holy unto the dogs. That's why you don't just go about laying hands on people, laying hands on people. You must know them. Who are they? So that you are not giving something sacred something special a deep experience to the people that do not know god first timothy chapter 5 verse 22 first timothy chapter 5 i'm reading from verse 22 lay hands suddenly on no man don't let them catch you unawares there's no time just come i need to i need prayer pastor lay hands on me i need the holy ghost you know this retreat before the retreat finishes i made a covenant i was coming from there and coming from there and there's something i've been looking for i want the holy ghost and since i came give me chance let me see the pastor we don't have any time let him lay hands on me before i go i need the holy ghost who are you give not that which is holy Unto the dogs, neither cast in your peers before swine. They will not appreciate it. They know nothing about repentance, about restitution, about holiness, about sanctification. And then you just lay hands on them, just to speak in tongues, speak in tongues after me. Lay hands on no man suddenly, neither be partakers of other men's sins. Keep thyself pure. Now, the work of the church, the work of the church, 
the holy thing. The holy thing. Keep not that which is holy unto the dogs. Overseer, state overseers, national overseer, and region overseers. Would you please uh, give me your ears and my partners in ministry here at the headquarters? Could you give me your ears? When we started Walker's Retreats, we'll just go to the camp, you know, the camp, those of you who are there. And then we'll just touch. We didn't even have the choir there. In our Walker's Retreat, we just went there. And where the choir that was singing at the Bible study, that was Bible study, that was a general meeting for a workers' retreat for many years, no choir. We just get in there and we say, now we just want to pray. Want to pray. Overseers, listen to me. And then the workers' retreat at that time, we gave a message like this, and the people will pray. It will be difficult to stop them from praying. 30 minutes they're still wrestling on their knees and the spirituality was deep we might be going back to that what i'm saying i just didn't dream of it tonight i've been looking at the ministry and i've been saying where did we begin how did we begin and how did we do it at that time and we're going back to the olden days so don't be surprised when we come 2008 a new year it's a year of consolidation and i call you for workers retreat and i say there is no choir it's not i'm angry with anybody i'm just looking at the word of god and i'm saying how can we give opportunity to only the people that have appreciation, that value what we have? And if I'm going to do that for workers, it is already I make announcement to you that I'm going to do it. You may not be surprised then if you come to the Congress. This one, 2008, already we're going to have the choir. But you may not be surprised if we come another year and we're just there and we just want to bury ourselves in spiritual things and we might decrease the number of those coming we might say that these are the only people that are going to come and we don't want singing or anything just to listen to the word of god and just to pray the day might come give not that which is holy unto the dogs neither cast your peers before swine lest they trample them on the feet and then turn again and rend you and then when that day comes then we will know the people that truly really love the lord and they love the church and you are not coming because of singing you're not coming because of music you're coming because you want the depth of the revelation of the mysteries of the kingdom praise the lord if you're still awake i said praise the lord <laughs> you know changes sometimes if you're a natural man changes are not sometimes convenient but you know changes are necessary very necessary for us to be able to actually have what we need to have. Now, that which is holy, the work of the kingdom. That's a holy privilege. Holy privilege. Sacred privilege. That which is holy. Let's look at Acts of the Apostles, chapter 6. Acts, chapter 6. I'm reading from verse 2. Acts, chapter 6. We're looking at verse 2. Then the twelve called the multitude of the disciples unto them and said, It is not reason, it is not reasonable that we should leave the word of God and serve tables. Wherefore, brethren, look ye out among you seven men of honest report, full of the Holy Ghost and, and wisdom, whom we may appoint over this business. But we will give ourselves continually to prayer and to the ministry of the word. 
Give not that which is solely unto the dogs. Give the work and give the assignment and give the privilege of ministry of priesthood to the people that appreciate the people that value that holy scene in the early church they wanted people that would just distribute food and then they said these are the qualification honesty fullness of the holy ghost and then we're going to appoint them unto this business another thing now that which is holy the emblems of the lord's supper that's holy thing the emblems of the lord's supper that's the holy thing. in fact in the early church the early church when the early church came together and they wanted to celebrate the lord's supper they'll bring out the emblems the bread and the fruit of the vine and they'll make an announcement they'll say holy things for holy people and therefore if you are not holy if you have not known the lord this is sacred holy sin emblems of the lord's supper then they will usher them out and then the rest of the people they will take the lord's supper the emblems are holy that's the holy sin give not that which is holy unto the dogs neither cast your pills before swine lest they turn around and rent you and then they'll trample over that wonderful thing first corinthians chapter 11 in first corinthians chapter 11 i'm reading from verse 23 first corinthians chapter 11 verse 23 for i have received of the lord that which also i delivered unto you that the Lord Jesus, the same night in which he was betrayed, took bread. And when he had given thanks, he broke it and said, Take it. This is my body, which is given for you, broken for you. Do this in remembrance of me. After that, after the same manner also, he took the cup when he had sought, saying, this cup is the new testament in my blood this do ye as oft as ye drink it in remembrance of me for as often as ye eat this bread and drink this cup ye do show the lord's death till he come wherefore whoso, wherefore whosoever shall eat this bread and drink this cup of the lord unworthily shall be guilty of the body and the blood of the lord but let a man examine himself and so let him eat of that bread and drink of that cup for he that eateth and drinketh unworthily, eateth and drinketh damnation unto himself, not discerning the Lord's body, not appreciating, not uh, putting the right value on the Lord's body. For this cause many are weak and sickly among you, and many sleep, many die. And so you understand what the Lord is telling us. Let's come back to Matthew chapter 7. Matthew chapter 7, we're looking at this verse 6. Great principle of the kingdom. And you need to understand it to be able to understand it and to be able to apply it. And you also need the courage as a leader in the church. And you need the courage as a worker in the vineyard of the Lord to be able to apply it so that you are not trembling and shaking. Oh Lord, I know your word. Oh Lord, I know what you said. Give not that which is solely unto the dogs. I know. I know that man. I know that woman. I know the nature. I know the character. I know I should not give the sacred sin, but I'm afraid. What he will do, why are you afraid what he will do? Even if you give him, is he going to rend you? Is he going to torture you? Is he going to do bad things to you? You will lose your good sin and you might even lose, you know, your own valuable life. And therefore, get up and do what the Lord wants you to do. Discern, understand, evaluate, and then follow the words of Jesus. Give not that which is holy unto the dogs neither cast ye your peers before swine lest they trample them under their feet and turn again and rend you 
I wish a Joseph attended a Bible study like this. That young man, but he had not attended any Bible study. He had a dream. And that dream was the good thing. Was the holy thing, sacred information that the Lord gave him. He said, Joseph, see, I'm giving you this sacred information. It's just for yourself. And then he woke up in the morning and then he called all his brothers, come on, come and hear something. Come and hear something. That which is holy, that which is sacred. This one is special. This is for me. What is it? He told them the dream. A great mistake he made. But God overruled the mistake, but he suffered, he suffered. Give not that which is holy unto the dogs. Neither can see your peers before swine. But you know, by the time Daniel came, Daniel was wise. And then if you read Daniel chapter 9, chapter 10, chapter 11, then chapter 12. And the Lord said, Daniel, seal it up. They will not understand until the end of time. Seal it up. Don't tell them. Seal it up. And then Mary got a visitation from an angel. Thou shalt conceive. How will that happen? I know no man. The Holy Ghost will come upon you. And that holy thing that will be born of you shall be called the Son of the Highest. And then Mary kept these things in her heart and meditated on what the angel had said. Didn't even tell Joseph. That's why Joseph wanted to put her away until an, an angel had to come to Joseph and said, I know Mary will not talk about it because Mary understands the principle. Give not that which is holy unto the dogs. Even though you are a just man, how could she open her mouth and tell you this? But this is what actually happened. Now, here comes John the Baptist. Oh, how I wish that John the Baptist a minister. We'll also take time and come to attend the Bible study of Jesus Christ. And he would have heard. And John the Baptist would have known. Give not that which is only unto the doors. He went to Herod. He said, I had you just got married. It's not right. You cannot marry your brother's wife. Herodias had about that. Then they stopped his ministry. They put him in the prison. And when the daughter was dancing, what do you want? Only one thing I want, the head of John the Baptist. John the Baptist, if he had known, give not that which is holy unto the dogs. Neither cast your peers before swine. They'll trample it on the feet. They'll turn around and rend you. And now Paul the apostle, he said, I know a man. Whether in the body I cannot tell or out of the body I cannot tell. How that man was taken to the third heaven. And he heard words only for his own encouragement. And he, and he saw things only for his own upliftment. Paul, tell us, what did you say? Those are unspeakable words. I cannot tell you. He wrote many epistles. He never mentioned that. He just said, it's unspeakable. It's unspeakable. I cannot tell anybody that thing. The Lord showed me that man was wise. Give not that which is holy unto the dogs. Neither can see your peers before swine. Lest they trample it under their feet. And then they rend you. I pray the Lord will give us wisdom. I said the Lord will give us wisdom. And then as we're growing up and growing up and we show that we have value and we have appreciation, recognition for the holy sin and the peers, at that stage, the Lord will give it to us. Look at Jesus Christ. You know, the disciples thought they had heard and learned everything. And uh, so Jesus then was telling the last week, just before he left, he said, I have many things to tell you, but I've not told you. Because you cannot bear them. Lord Jesus, were your disciples. Why didn't you tell us? Do you remember? I just told you one thing. And I said, the Jews will take me. They will crucify me. And then on the third day, I will rise up. Do you know how Peter looked at me and almost tore me to pieces and said, that will not happen to you? Do you know it almost brought a problem between me and Peter? When I told you that thing, that's why I saw that you are not ready for all the things. Therefore, when the Holy Ghost has come, 
it will tell you all things jesus applied the principle himself give not that which is holy unto the dogs neither cast you your peers before swine lest they trample them on their feet and then they turn around and then they rain you i pray god will give us wisdom and i pray we'll grow up can we rise up now and talk to the lord in prayer that the lord himself will help us he will help us and then we'll get to the point whatever the lord wants to reveal to us it will be easy for him to reveal unto us and then let the lord give you wisdom how you share the deep things of the kingdom the deep mysteries of the kingdom with the outsiders there keep to the gospel keep to the bread of life keep to the water of life and just give that alone to them and whenever you see any change taking place in our administration in the church just understand it's because of the wisdom we're learning from the scriptures that's the reason we're doing what we're doing don't fight the administration of the church just say wherever the church the lord is leading the church i'm following on and will follow through open your mouth and talk to the lord in prayer help us lord help us lord help us lord that will be a very best for the kingdom of god very best for the kingdom of god and then to be able to understand and apply this word of the lord give not that which is holy unto the dogs lest they trample them on the feet and then they turn again and rend and tear and harm and hurt you. Tell the Lord to give you the self-control, the wisdom, the submission to the word and the will of the Lord. Oh, that the Lord will help you. That you'll not exclude yourself from the holy thing. It's precious. It's not distributed to every dick and hurry. The deep mysteries of the kingdom. Not for every dick and hurry. The privilege of ministry. The privilege of of priesthood the holy thing is not given to everybody the privilege of being in full time service in the kingdom the holy thing is not given to everybody the privilege of ministry to leaders we get our leaders together from all over africa our preachers a pile lost to heaven the people who are deep in the things of the lord those great great men and women of god we gather them together and then it's not everybody that can come and minister to them that privilege of ministry to such people is a holy thing and if you're going to have the privilege of ministering to such people then you need to distinguish yourself When we bring our workers together, the privilege of ministering to those workers, preaching to them, singing to them, serving them in any way is a great, great, great treasure. It's a holy thing. And if you're going to have that privilege, if we're going to give that privilege to you, you must prove to us that you will not trample that privilege on the feet and you will not rent us you will not destroy us giving you such a privilege give not that which is holy unto dogs if anybody wants to come and ask you for your daughter or your son you have raised them up you have labored on those daughters and sons they want to marry them you have a right to know who are they. Are they qualified to have what you have spent your whole lifetime raising up? Are they qualified to have that holy sin 
your daughter, your son, that's your pearl of great price in your family. You don't want to throw that pearl away just like that to any swine, to any dog. This great ministry, the Palais Bible Church, this massive church that the Lord himself has raised up. If you are going to give the privilege to anybody to be in leadership, hand over a whole state, a whole region, thousands of members, you are going to hand it over, give to somebody to be their pastor, their leader. You don't want to give that to just anybody. Give not that which is holy unto dogs. Neither cast in your peers. We don't have any other peer. This is a precious treasure. The church. And we cannot just cast it to somebody. Just because I want to preach. I want to preach. Who are you? We must know you. I must know what value you put on the church before we give you such a privilege. Cast not that which is holy unto the dogs, neither cast your peers before swine, lest they trample them on the feet, and then they turn around and rend you. Give yourself to the Lord. And after this message, brothers and sisters, if you react, if anybody reacts in an unchristian or righteous way, that's the quickest way for us to know you are one of the dogs and the swine that the Lord wants us about. You sell out yourself. If after this message you react in any negative way, that's the quickest, easiest way to, for us to identify you. And you have somebody here that will be very careful not to cast, not to give that which is holy unto a dog like you. Nor cast our, our peers before any swine. If you react in a, a graceless manner, a righteous manner, you are telling us that what you have heard tonight, you don't have any value, any appreciation for it. We'll recognize you. You want to shut up our mouth so we cannot tell the truth to the people of God. We'll recognize, we'll take action. Brothers and sisters, we need to pray on this Bible study. Give not that which is precious unto the dogs. 